This was the last thing I expected this week. There's a lot of handhelds coming out right now. Among the PC handhelds, the Steam Deck remains my favorite just because of how cheap and versatile it is. It doesn't play everything, but the things that it does play are easier to get running than they would be on a Windows-based device. That's not to say it doesn't have its flaws. Stock, it's objectively pretty ugly. That's why I threw this aftermarket shell on it. It's kind of big and heavy. All PC handhelds have battery life issues, and this screen is not the greatest. Well, all of these issues got addressed in a mid-cycle refresh. Valve said that they weren't gonna make a new Steam Deck for a really long time, but they never said that they couldn't just change the current one. Valve took a page out of Nintendo's book with the Steam Deck OLED. On the surface, it's the same sort of upgrade. You get a nicer, bigger, crisper, brighter, beautiful new OLED screen. But underneath the surface, there's a ton of upgrades that they aren't really advertising. I think because they see them as minor upgrades, but they're actually pretty substantial. It's slightly lighter, the APU is smaller and runs cooler, the fan is quieter, the battery is better, there's a limited edition version that has essentially the same smoky black transparent shell as the one that I modded, and probably the biggest change is the OLED screen that is now 90 hertz instead of 60 which is not advertised on their spec sheet at all. That's like the biggest deal. And that's not even everything. There's a lot of other little stuff that makes this the definitive Steam Deck to get right now, especially if you don't already have a Steam Deck. If you do have a Steam Deck, is this worth upgrading? I think you'll have to check out the features and decide for yourself. This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. When I was in Sicily, my grandfather told me that if you have a good cup of coffee in the morning, you won't need the touch of a woman. I was three. Here today, we're gonna have Joe's Coffee. This is actually from uh, Manhattan. I've been here before. Come on. This Joe's Coffee has notes of cocoa, spice, and caramel. You want an Americano? Oh, you got it. First thing you're gonna need is an espresso machine. Make sure you grab the one that you have as a backup because the one they usually use is in the shop. Make sure you have your bedpan because your backup leaks all of the time. Trade is a coffee subscription service that has you go through a matching process and then it curates the coffee based on how you make it at home and how you best like your coffee. It's a subscription service that gives you as much coffee as you want, as frequent as you want. It's actually something that I used before I even did the sponsorships and now I have upped my frequency because I make coffee for too many people now. What do you want, an Americano? Iced? Yes, I need the cups. Could you just... Trade roasts your coffee to order and delivers it exactly when you need it. There's multiple ways to experience coffee with Trade. Sign up for a subscription or try one of their starter packs. And you can try it for yourself over at drinktrade.com slash wolfden. If you use that link, you get a free bag of coffee with your first subscription purchase. Nah, I still miss my wife. They've completely changed the pricing structure. Previously, they had three versions, the 64 gigabyte, the 256 gigabyte, and the 512 gigabyte versions. The 64 gigabyte version was the biggest deal to me because that was just $400. The storage is so easy to upgrade yourself on a Steam Deck. So you could just get that super cheap version and put your own one terabyte or even two terabyte SSD in there for cheaper than it would be to upgrade to any of the other models. Now they've kept the $400 tier, but that version is now 256 gigabytes. So it's a little bit better, but it is still the LCD model. It is not the OLED. In order to get the OLED model, you're gonna have to spend $550. The OLED model is substantially better. So that $400 barrier to entry doesn't seem as enticing. I would have liked it if they had a $400 OLED version or even a $450 OLED version of some kind. It doesn't matter what storage is in there. The $550 OLED model, which is the baseline OLED model, does come with 512 gigabytes of storage, which is more storage than you got in the previous $550 version. 
and $650 gets you the one terabyte OLED model. And this model comes with the anti-glare coating on the screen, which I have since learned is a controversial topic that we'll get into later. That's the version that I have right here in my hands. But then there's also the limited edition one, which is a beaut. It's the same as the one that I have here, but it's got a sick smoky black shell and some beautiful red accents. I want this one badly. This is gonna make this video a bit confusing because the smoky black one that I have here is actually the older 256 gigabyte model that I upgraded myself with a third party shell. But it does look pretty similar to that limited edition one. And the new one that I have has the standard black shell. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at the B-roll of all of these different Steam decks. The smoky one that I have is actually a modded older version. Let's address the screen first and foremost because that is front and center on this device. And it is the most beautiful OLED screen that I have ever seen in any device. Part of that is because of that 90 Hertz refresh rate. Even the boot animation is gorgeous and now has red accents. The most obvious difference an OLED screen has is the contrast. Since OLED screens have individually lit pixels, solid black can just be completely off. This makes the blacks deep as hell and the rest of the colors pop way out. This screen also has HDR. Admittedly, I don't know much about HDR, at least in terms of video games. It always looks different on every device that I use. There's some sort of mismatch between like the monitor that I'm using or display and the device that I have. And I don't, I usually just turn it off. Here, it kind of just adds even more dynamic range to games that support it, but it's not all that necessary on this screen if the brightness is adjusted correctly in the games that you're playing. I noticed very subtle changes in Resident Evil 2. It just looked like slightly more detail in the midtones. The bright lights of the explosions looked incredible, but they looked good with the HDR off too. The star of the show is the dynamic range achieved by the OLED screen. The OLED screen is a massive improvement. The HDR is just a slight improvement on top of that. So I didn't really believe that the HDR is actually brighter. So I have my camera at six stops of ND filter. So I blew up some which is super bright lights. I had an HDR on and HDR off and I brought it into Premiere to compare the two. And yeah, it looks a little bit brighter, but to my naked eye, couldn't really tell much of the difference. Digital Foundry says it's 600 nits peak brightness versus a thousand nits peak brightness in HDR mode. That sounds like a significant difference, but the standard OLED is pulling much of the weight here. However, I have heard that HDR does improve battery life, so you might as well just leave it on when, when you can. This is a massive improvement over the older Steam Deck's LCD screen in terms of contrast, because the older Steam Deck had some pretty bright blacks, and it even had some manufacturing issues where parts of the screen were brighter than others, especially around the edges. I experienced this in a refurbished model that I purchased and did some tests on. The LCD panel seemed to have some weird pressure on it that made some areas brighter than others. This was fixed by literally twisting the entire unit. I have since given that unit away. Hopefully it has a nice, long, healthy life with its new owner after all of that aggressive twisting. Valve has also announced that the new Steam Deck's screen is easier to replace than the old screen because it can easily be popped out from the front instead of being accessed from the back. This is fantastic news because I did have to take the screen out of my older Steam Deck when I was doing the shell replacement, and that was an absolute fucking nightmare. So if anything happens to your brand new cool screen, you can rest assured that replacing it should be relatively easy, at least easier than it was before. Anything could happen to it, like let's say, for example, burn in, which I'm sure was on a lot of people's minds this whole time. OLED screens are susceptible to burn in. I just did a video where I talked about my uh, Nintendo Switch OLED that I've been running for two years just to test how susceptible it is to burn in. And again, that should be a very similar panel to what's in this Steam Deck OLED. I'm not too concerned about burn-in, thanks to the tests that we did on that thing. You'd have to run it for a really long time to get any sort of burn-in. We've proven that that screen can withstand a substantial beating, 
I do plan on also testing out this screen in the same way because I feel obligated to now in, in the name of content. However, I will be waiting until I can get my hands on a second one because I like this thing a lot and I actually want to use it and play it. And I don't want it sitting on my wall until I get another one. The image I will use is the same Legend of Zelda screenshot, but it's a 720p screenshot. So for that extra 80 pixels, I'll add some color bars and other test bits. So the burn-in will be easier to track. Part of me also wants to test the original Steam Deck's LCD screen because LCD screens are susceptible to image retention, which is a different issue and can sometimes be fixed by just turning the unit off, waiting a little bit and turning it back on. It's, it's not always a permanent issue, but it would be interesting to see which one comes first, the OLED screen burn in or the LCD screen image retention. But I really don't feel like having three devices sitting on my wall at full brightness, just blasting light in my office at all times of the day for the next, what, year? I mentioned that this version is equipped with the anti-glare coating. You can see it right there, getting some glare. <laughs> I did not have this on my previous Steam Deck, and I like it a lot. I think the deep blacks just melt away. It almost doesn't even look like a screen. It just blends in so well with the rest of the unit. I have since learned that a lot of people don't share this opinion. A lot of people think that the anti-glare coating affects the richness of the colors that an OLED screen can have. I personally think that the glare from lights affects it just a little bit more. Come on, find the glare. There we go, thank you. I don't have a glossy OLED screen to compare it to other than the Nintendo Switch OLED screen, which again is a similar panel. So it should have pretty much the same dynamic range. I'd imagine it would be a perfect match to the glossy OLED screens on the lower models of the Steam Deck. Just a lower refresh rate and slightly lower res. You can see that the blacks aren't as deep on the anti-glare coating, but it's very slight. Maybe there's less contrast when under certain lighting conditions, but under those same lighting conditions, you'd have glare on the glossy finish. The anti-glare kind of makes light reflections bloom, dispersing them, which looks a lot harsher on video than it does in real life. The glossy screen just makes all that light very harsh. I just think the anti-glare looks awesome, like, like a matte finish. If we're measuring dynamic range and like, I don't know, brightness nits, then on paper, the regular glossy coating would probably be better than the anti-glare coating. But I don't really care what the technical reasons are. I think the anti-glare coating looks cool. I think having less glare is better than all of these minor technical differences, if there even are any. There's no way to quantify why I like the anti-glare coating more other than just looks cool. So put that on the box. Something about this unit also makes it run cooler. Something about the smaller APU and a newer fan, which also runs significantly quieter. This is a huge plus considering the old fan was loud as hell. They also don't advertise this, but the RAM is slightly faster. This is reminding me of the Lenovo Legion Go that we reviewed, what, last week? That has slightly more refresh rate on the screen than the Asus ROG Ally, even though they have very similar specs. And that extra faster memory makes up for the difference in the refresh rate, and we're seeing that here too. That faster RAM and the more improved cooling will both give you just slightly better performance. That'll help you boost games up to 90 frames per second. I will say that while the unit has improved thermals, it still gets pretty hot when using it. So you can still use it as a space heater in the winter. It's getting cold in New York. Battery life is also slightly improved. The specs on their website claim that they went from two to eight hours in the older model to three to 12 hours, which is such a wide spectrum to say that you can get anywhere from three to 12 hours. Honey, I will be done filming this video anywhere from two minutes from now to Sunday. <laughs> I remember reading somewhere that it was three to 15 hours at some point. I think they might have changed that. They're also claiming that it's between 30 and 50% better battery life, which is also 
kind of a wild claim. The battery is only going from a 40 watt hour battery to a 50 watt hour battery. So claiming up to 50% better battery life is kind of insane. But I guess you also have to factor in the slightly better thermals and the more power efficient APU. This slight change in battery life was noticeable while playing Sonic Superstars, but probably won't be that noticeable when playing something that ramps up the power of the deck. So upgrading this version of the Steam Deck for just the battery alone probably won't be worth it. It's also 29 grams lighter, which is almost a double shot of espresso. That shouldn't be significant. That's not that much, but you notice it immediately. It is significant. This makes the Steam Deck suddenly not that much of a burden to hold. It is a massive device, so any alleviation is welcome. Lastly, we should talk about the way that it looks. This is not the limited edition. This is just the regular old version, so it shouldn't look that different. Now you have a red accented power button and the LED next to it is a color changing LED. And the plastic under the thumbsticks is black instead of white. These thumbsticks are slightly different in design, meaning the old hull effect mods won't work on this new Steam Deck. That is, until manufacturers like Gully Kit make a new design. This one is also supposedly easier to get into thanks to an updated screw design, but it was already pretty easy to get into before. Also, it turns out you can in fact just take your old SSD from your old Steam Deck and just pop it into the new one, no problem. You'll just have to do a system update once it's installed. I did not think this would work because of that 90 hertz screen and the updated boot animation, but Taki Udon says that it does, and I'd trust that man with my life. It also now has a Wi-Fi 6E, and the last one only had Wi-Fi 5. That doesn't really affect me. When I download things, I plug it straight in hardwired. So downloads are fast anyway. So if you've never had a Steam Deck before, the OLED is worth the extra couple of bucks. I really wish they had a cheaper version of the OLED because that $400 price point is just such an easy thing to recommend to people. But this OLED screen, and the bonus power upgrades and the slightly better battery life and all the little minor details make me want to recommend the $550 version, which I understand is a stretch for a lot of people. That's an extra 150 bucks. A Steam Deck is definitely worth getting if you don't have one already. If you do have one already, I want to say that it's not worth upgrading to this one. It's not like it's a completely new Steam Deck. It's billed as a slight spec bump. But the reality is that this is a pretty substantial upgrade. Definitely don't go throwing out your LCD Steam Decks, but maybe consider all the things that I said in this video and consider for yourself whether or not they matter to you. Would that extra dynamic range and 90 Hertz help? Do you need just a tad faster RAM to get a specific game running the way you want? Also consider this. The Steam Deck is so easily upgradable that it's possible soon we'll be hearing about upgrade kits. We did see those 1200 piece screens come out a few months ago. We could see something similar soon in the way of OLED. Curb your buyer's remorse for now is all I'm saying. So what do you guys think about the OLED Steam Deck? Is this the spec bump you needed to get the fire under your ass to want to buy one for yourself. I already liked the Steam Deck before. I love this now, but God, I want a Steam Deck Lite. Still, I've been loving how this thing works. Leave in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. I'm keeping microfibers on my desk near to me at all times because I get fingerprints on everything. I stream over on twitch.tv slash wolfden. I stream to me messing around with this thing. You can chat with me live before I make these videos. Thank you, Trade, for helping sponsor this video. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the description below. And the most important thing you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here if you want to see how this thing burns in in a year's time. And share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe doesn't have a Steam Deck and is thinking about getting one. This might convince them to do that. Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good week.